it's a small portion of people that support homosexuality or that it's a really small portion of the population. The reality is from the Pew research that I just said, even the majority of conservatives now support the acceptance of homosexuality. So oh, I have no problem with homosexuality. So like, like if Pride Month was purely about, about the gay community, I'd be fine with it. You really think that it's not about the gay community? It's it's LGBT has like become a lesbian, gay, bisexual. Like it has tangent off into transgender, transsexual, pansexual people that don't believe in genders, people that don't believe in like it's just it's gotten way too conflated and bloated. So you're saying the extra letters in there are detracting from gay people actually being accepted? And the extra people in the community. Did you know that the original Pride riots were led by people in drag and transgender people? I mean, this, I'm, this drag isn't is a very common thing in the gay community, it appears. This, this isn't something that spiraled into more than just about the gays. They were there from the start. But my whole thing is normalizing that with children, especially drag, because drag is always almost done in a sexual environment. I still don't see how this is propaganda. I mean, if we're looking at propaganda, we're looking at like misinformation, you know, generally at... targeted and organized, and that's just not. It's like an organic, it's an organic expression of various sexualities. Can... Yeah, like we can debate all day about it. I think it's ultimately going to come down to what people like describe as degenerate. Like, I think we would both agree that like shooting a puppy in the head and throwing it at like the window of a preschool is completely degenerate. Like when you decry that as degenerate activity. Yeah. So, like that's something by... we'll both. No, no, do... no, 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 no. What do you mean by degenerate? Define degenerate. Like what I believe degenerate means. Yeah, of course. I would say it's like immoral, like not immoral. I'm not even religious at all, so it's something that is morally wrong for like the culture. I would say. What does it mean for something to be morally wrong for the culture? Something that shouldn't be brought into the culture because it'll do more damage than good for the society overall. Okay, and so what's the argument for that with respect? To so I'm saying I don't think we're going to come to agreement on whether it is or isn't propaganda because what I think is degenerate is obviously going to be different from what okay, one of so you just, think is degenerate. So, so look, it's just your feelsies, right? No, I mean, I wouldn't say it comes down to feelings. I would say it comes down to okay, different things well, that we can cite that we probably wouldn't agree on. Sure, so, so, so start citing things. Okay, would you say people in the Soviet Union or Nazi Germany enjoyed good aspects of life and their daily life going about it if they were not part of a marginalized group? Start citing. What do you mean? You said you had sources you could cite. This, this is what I'm citing. I'm asking you, do you think if these people were happy in Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union? I have no clue. Please start citing sources. I mean, what, you want me to pull up like stuff about Soviet life and dachas and what life is like in the Soviet Union? No, you like look. Like you, you said that transgenderism is degenerate, and then you said it's not just your feelsies. You said there is something you could cite, and so now I'm just waiting for you to cite those things. Oh, I can cite the collapse of societies that allowed degeneracy into them, and then how they become degenerate and then collapse. Sure. I'm still caught up on the point that uh, various other, you know, the the trans, trans and so forth are an actual threat to the people who are gay and their and their sort of agenda. I don't see, if you ask the average gay person, and, and you know, you have to look, I don't know if this has been measured, are they actually feeling threatened by, you know, the extra letters on there? And I would argue not. I would argue that it's sort of synergistically works with them as opposed to, to uh, brings them down. So I don't see how that's, I don't see how that's actually accurate. I mean, I wouldn't say that they're a threat to the gay community. I would say that they detract from the gay community. 
because like I would say people like there's no, not many people have a repulsive attitude like not many people repulsed by gay people in my like findings but like in my, in my life even gay people I know have been repulsed by like the way that transgender people act and like how they go about this. Well this is also just you know the unfolding of history I mean go back 30 40 years and that was the norm for how people reacted to homosexuality and now transgender and, and etc is at that point. I mean, I would say that's, yeah, that's part of the like the whole biblical expansion. But if you go to back to pre-biblical times, homosexuality is kind of treated like it is now. Transgenderism wasn't. Yeah, and I don't think like how it was treated or wasn't treated throughout history necessarily means you know it was it was right or not. But I'm, I'm arguing that there just isn't really a, <laughs> there isn't a problem with accepting any of these, and that it isn't propaganda really. So if, I don't know if you want to still argue that it's propaganda or not, or just argue that trans people are something you don't like. I mean, I think it's going to be propaganda just because of what I think is degenerate. So I don't think that's going to really click with anyone else in here. Well, look, you said you could cite sources. Yeah, I'm looking for sources Mike, on the Mike, decline of the Roman Empire in Sparta right now. Mike, Mike has cited sources. Where are your sources? I mean, you you understand this is a very opinionated discussion as well, right? It's just your feelsies. But if you can make a strong, I mean, you make a strong case for for why you feel that way, then maybe we could have a conversation about it. But if it's just how you feel, I think it has to do more with the societies I idolize. Would probably be different than the yeah. society that you would idolize. So the part of societies that you idolize are being anti-trans. I would say trans people have really no benefit for the societies that I would idolize. No. Why do, why do I think they have a benefit? Because they can't reproduce children. I mean, like they can't reproduce in a natural way. What about people that are infertile? Okay, they really don't have much use either then. So value is 100% based off reproduction? I would say value is pretty based off reproduction and genes, yes. I'm very, I'm very, very uh, eugenics. So... So you think we don't have enough people on Earth, and we need to make more people? Uh, no, I wouldn't say we have. I'd say we have a little bit too much right now, but that's because we that be like for not being such easy produce. lives. Like people don't understand actual hardship, so there's like we should actually be worshiping trans people then because they can't reproduce and they're helping us not overpopulate. We should what? I, watch it. No, I would. I would say we should try to find a treatment for gender oh, dysphoria. Trans people. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just fucking... We do have a treatment for gender dysphoria. It's called transgenderism. The study of actual, like, the certain drugs that treat, that could treat gender dysphoria, though, is banned because they're considered Tourette's drugs, not gender dysphoria drugs, so it's illegal per the FDA's rules. I'd want a citation on that, as well as the citation that it's degenerate, which, whichever one that you're thinking. I just want to really unpack your, what problems you have with trans people, because the case you made so far is actually why you support it in a way other than just like a feeling of, of wanting people to be able to reproduce as, as a superior quality i mean i have five minutes so i'll see how much i can discuss but i will be back tomorrow but what's your exact question what are your fundamental issues with trans people other than the lack of reproduction unless you say it's just that my fundamental issues with trans people is that they don't follow the natural like path that humans have followed for millions of years. I also have a problem with fat people. I have a problem with lazy people. I have a problem with people that don't work out. Oh dear lord, please don't. So maybe we just have a problem. Everything is propaganda. Any, I, have, I honestly kind of have, have, have a problem with people that don't try is, to be is, is, is the anti-trans right. argument really just going to be an appeal to nature? I was like hoping for something at least slightly better than that. I mean, the suicide rate is pretty, a pretty good evidence as to why you shouldn't want your child to be transgender. Yeah, at, at least I, go with that instead of the appeal social to nature. Pressure, though. No, no, look, that study that you're citing for that the authors of that study have explicitly decried the kind of citation you just did, because what they're not discovering in that study is a causal direction um, such that it's transgender uh, is leading to suicidal ideation. The point of that study was to establish the fact that there's a correlation 
And one of the things that they suggest, and one of the things that's supported by the rest of the body of the literature, is that it's overwhelmingly our views and the ways that we treat transgender individuals that leads to their suicidal ideation. When you have people post-operation and post-transition in accepting communities, the suicide rate basically vanishes. Society's never going to treat people as they would a normal male or female. I would. I, I mean, I. It's impossible to really know. I mean, in the future, we could be worshiping trans people, like you know, autistic people were worshipped in certain societies. I think. I think the thing is, is like. Mike has been just citing like sources fact for fact, and like you're just here sitting feelsying at us. Like he keeps saying bullshit about the Roman Empire without uh, analyzing the fact that like there was a whole host of reasons why the Roman Empire collapsed. Oh no, <laughs> like, I, I, like, I know that. Like, yeah. like irres irrespective of their acceptance of transgenders and of homosexuals. And correct me if I'm wrong. Sorry to go back to this, but I'm pretty sure hermaphrodites are even you know, revered in certain cultures. Of course. They are. I'm still hung up on the conclusion that if someone hit menopause and they were overweight, but they cured cancer, they have no value. I didn't say that. I said I don't like fat people. Uh, also, those other cultures are clearly just the bad cultures. I mean, just so the room, like... Also, but if someone's recognize... curing cancer... And does it matter what they look like? Yeah, just so the room can recognize. Does it matter this. if they can reproduce? Every, every time you every time you press this guy on why he thinks something, it's oh yeah, I just feel that way. Um, still also, waiting, I, still waiting on some kind of statistic. So why do you feel that transgender people should be accepted into society? Because I have Is there no scientific reason to, reasoning have, behind I have, it. I have, I have no reason to suspect they shouldn't. So you feel that they shouldn't. It's it's like a point of agnosticism. It's, it's a it's yeah it's a point of agnosticism, right? Like for example, if I came to you and said, "Look, I want to oppress all redheaded people," you would say, "Okay, sure, but but why?" And then I start like foaming up the mouth and start saying, "It's just a feeling, bro." Uh, there's a, there's a clear distinction between like the kinds of feelings that we're having here. The kind of feeling I'm having is just a feeling of agnosticism. I haven't been convinced of the position that I should be oppressing some group. Whereas your kind of feeling is the kind that we should oppress this group. And so I'm just asking you to substantiate some kind of positive claim about their degeneracy. Just like Mike has. I mean, I would just say societies benefit from idolizing certain things. If you look at societies that idolize strong figures, strong traditional figures, warrior classes, any society that has a warrior class that's revered is usually a very successful society. Sure. I would just, like, look, Mike and I have been asking you for sources, so just start citing them. Okay, is you're telling me that the Roman Republic pre-empire is not successful? Look, start citing things. It's okay, like you want what do you want? A picture of the extent of the Roman Empire's borders? No, no I, I want like societies that I, I, revere I want, these warrior. Like, I want things. a I want a some kind of prospective analysis, right? That shows that when we idolize fascist aesthetics that it leads to a successful society and that the opposite is true. Otherwise, we're just doing one-off case studies, um, which are incredibly complex, right? Like <laughs> the, the rise and the downfall of the Roman Empire isn't wholly reducible down to its aestheticism. Um, also, just in the interest of balancing out the debate a bit, um, we have Raman also who takes a position that's somewhat like... Um... Uh, the other guy's position. So, Raman, why don't why don't you add in your case too? Yeah, I only have three minutes, so. And if he doesn't have something, I have a question. I have like a hypothetical I want. I'm curious about. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. So, I think this is kind of interesting because most people that I know that are trans just identify as the gender that is not their body. So, I would ask you if you were to just wake up tomorrow magically as a female, feeling exactly the same that you do today, still feeling like you're a male. How would you feel about that? What would you want to do? I mean, that's... Can you give me something that's actually possible? It's, it's the experience that most, in my experience, from what I believe, most trans people have that exact feeling. So putting you into those shoes, how would you feel? I would try to seek out things that would let me live as a female, happily. 
So you'd be like, oh, just, you know, I don't, I don't need to be gay anymore. I'm just going to, so you're saying it is possible to just make an emotional shift to another gender then. And that is valid for you in that situation. Uh, see, well, the problem is that transgender people were born in the body of a male or female. They didn't instantly shift one day. So I kidnap, somebody kidnaps you and gives you a sex change. I would still identify as a man. Yeah. And that's how a lot of people who are born into a female body feel. And so it's not really their choice in most, in most cases. And even if it is, you're, you know, just a second ago, you made the choice to be a female. You're saying that'd be good. The difference is, though, that you're proposing a hypothetical in which I'm taken against my will and change. These people have a mental disorder that they're born with. I'm posing a hypothetical where you are em emotionally in the exact same position that these people are in, and you just demonstrated that you would do what they would want to do. So, I said I would continue living as a male if I was given a sex change. Just because I'm given a sex change that's physical to my body, someone cuts my penis off, that doesn't make me a... I think he's saying that you magically become the other sex. Okay, well, transgender people don't magically become the other sex. They're still biologically in the body of a male or female. Right, he's just giving you the hypothetical to pretty much delve deeper into Yeah, I'm just trying to, I think I'm just trying to just get a little bit, I don't know, just trying to get a little bit of like related little kind of empathy, sort of just putting it in the position and then seeing, seeing how you would feel if you were in their position and whether, they, you know, whether you would be considered trash to society, basically. Oh, I would definitely feel that I had way less societal value. Yeah. I would feel at that point, my biggest societal, if I was put in the body of a woman, I would feel that at that point, my biggest societal value could be just living the life of a normal woman. I still don't see why societal value has to be gender-based or why human, or what, going back to the idea of, of just like why I value I have trans one minute, by the way. Humans. I mean, trans people are still human. Oh, yeah, obviously. I mean, there's no reason to treat someone like shit. Yeah, and by having a specific gender, you have specific values. Like, you can't be a man transitioning into a woman and still have kids. Yeah, but I still, I still think that a woman, in my opinion, a woman who's decided to not have kids is still valuable to society. I have to go, but I'll be back tomorrow. With sources for you. About the degenerate downfall of society. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank, thank you for talking. Sorry, I can't speak at full volume. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not the one uh, claiming that they have no value to society. So, what is what is your uh, issue here? What's your position then? How how it affects kids mostly how it affects kids, how trans people affect kids, or how being trans affects somebody who's a kid? Well, the treatment for it, because just by growing up, you largely, you largely learn to conform to the gender that was given to you at birth. So with the public trying to transition these kids earlier on in life, it might just lead them to a, a life of un... It might just lead them to unhappiness later on. Do you have any case for why they would be less happy? I mean, and, and from, from my understanding, it's, you know, the more years that somebody lives in a body that they don't identify with, the more of a problem it could be for them. Well, I mean, I can state right now that I thought I wanted to be a, a girl in the past, but that was only for about like two years during my teenage years. So I definitely experienced that. And I believe there's other people who have experienced the same feeling, but generally they grow out of it. I'm, I'm not familiar with like the, the minimum age of, of uh, transition surgery, as anyone know? I mean, in my opinion, from what I've heard, it's usually like 18 or older. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Well, you can transition way earlier than that, at least in America. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think, yeah, I don't think that's right. No. Mike, did you have a response to that, or can I get into the the, the medical literature and the reasoning behind? It? Uh, what you call it, gender dysphoria? Yeah. So look, um, there's a whole body of literature out there that has studied. Anyway, this I, we'd have to look up that those details, but I'm just curious. So, so you thought that you 
wanted to transition that didn't what like changed well i i wasn't thinking about the whole transitioning part i just felt kind of like a female you felt like a female but you didn't just have the you didn't fully you know take in what it meant to get a transition you're saying yes especially at that age so what do you mean do you think this is normal i mean i i think a very small portion of people regret getting a transition and the damage of that is probably a lot less than you know the suicides and etc from being you know from not it's getting a transition on, talk to sorry hold up but i mean i thought it was like they go through the transitions later on in the year they don't want to and then they can't change it and then they like kill themselves i thought that's how it happened Sorry, I missed that. You're saying there's more of an issue with people transitioning and then having an issue or not transitioning and having an issue? Yeah, uh, transitioning. Because, like, they have the statistic where, like, I believe it was, like, 80% of kids who want to be transgender later on, they're, like, don't want to be. And then when they have that in a very young age, then that 80% Sounds like a very exaggerated be. statistic. Like, I don't know. If it's 80%, I think it lower or higher but i'm pretty sure it's 80 percent and uh, when they're kids not when they're adults then when they have all these changes when they're kids you know later on in their life they don't want to do it usually 18 or 19 and they can't change it back there's no surgery to you know undo this stuff i mean we have to get a number on that but i'm, I'm quite sure it's really low and then going back to suicide i mean there's many factors that would push a trans person to to suicide that's not just whether or not they got a transition uh would you say that transgenders have a are more likely to commit suicide than a regular pop we know that as a fact they are much more likely of i course. can find that yeah, of okay well one of those other things i support is um, transgenders not being part of the military. Yeah, I mean, neither. I think they should not be. What's the problem there, you think? Well, the so, military, uh, in the military, there's already a higher uh, percentage of people who commit suicide than the general population. So I believe transgenders joining would have a higher, high, higher likelihood of doing but we have, we have to, like, dissect this as in, like, people who dress up as it or people who go through the, you know, surgery. So, yeah. I mean, I don't care if they want to dress up as it, but when they go through the surgeries, they have a higher chance and they have this thing called gender dysphoria and it's a mental disorder. I don't know if there's any way for us to talk about um, what was like initially brought up about like Pride Month is propaganda, and um, I know like the guy that was here before didn't really have an answer for why it might have been propaganda. What happened? I said, "Who Mike the vegan or whatever?" No, I was arguing against that. Well, someone uh, it was. I think it was the guy who left or whatever, but he had brought up, yeah. or, or even before that. That someone had had their name changed to Pride is uh, propaganda, or sorry, Pride Month is propaganda, and I, I somewhat agree with that. Um, and I wanted to argue why it is propaganda, and that I feel like, or I think that um, within Pride Month, there are a lot of like political, um, I guess, undertones within like the parades, and and that's a big part of the month. And for that reason, I feel like that is a, a good enough argument for why Pride Month is negative. And and it shouldn't be celebrate like celebrated in a very like oversaturated way in the you way that it is in America. Derailed by other groups trying to put propaganda in that Pride Month itself as a whole is propaganda. I'm sorry, could you say that again? You're saying that because certain groups try to derail the Pride Month itself, that Pride Month in its entirety is propaganda. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's it's more about like Pride Month in itself being um, filled with like political, I think, undertones, and that there are a lot of uh, um, 
implications within it um, that are political and that can be uh, negative and exclusive, whereas Pride Month um, claims to be inclusive and about inclusivity, where I don't think that is completely true. I just got the shut up, so I have to stop talking. But uh, yeah, someone else can someone else can respond. Thanks.